Oh, my goodness. Mr. Bergman, what on what? earth are you doing? You sound like a dying duck. No, I've been working on this. I'm, uh, I've, I've been trying to... Uh, I think I'm becoming a musician. Ah, right? uh, well... I would say... Probably don't quit your day job. Instead, let's look at uh, AP Chemistry Vodcast no, 2.1. Musician. You don't like my musicians? Uh, well, if you can call kazoo an in musical instrument and... Uh, don't you don't think I'm good. Well, I, I don't know. I would say don't quit your day job. Well, guys, Stick I'm, with not chemistry. Certain, I'm not certain I'd want it to... Uh, um, no, I don't know. I like it. Well, well I may, you might want to just explore your, your musical abilities here a little bit. It's kind of like my inner child coming out. Yeah, it's an inner something. <laughs> inner duck. It's a duck. Yeah. No? No. Okay. No. Try again. Well, well we're going to start talking about uh, AP Chemistry Podcast 2.1 here. Uh, today, mostly, we're going to be looking at naming compounds. And uh, also uh, some uh, chemical equations, I believe. So chemical equations. Oh, yeah. I love chemical equations, Mr. Sands. All right. So um, if you remember correctly, there's a few different types of chemical compounds. We've got ionic compounds. We've got covalent compounds. And we have acids. And they all have different, uh, uh, different rules for naming. So the first thing that we're going to look at is ionic compounds. Now, if you remember... What's an ion? It comes like uh, from what word? Mr. Well, it looks to me like we have the word ion in there. And if you remember things with ions What's have ion? a positive or a negative charge. And the things with a positive charge are called cat ions. And then we remember that as cat has a T and T's look like a plus. That's true. That's good. Okay, and I like that. anions are negatively charged. Yes, and what does the prefix A mean in the English language, Mr. Sam? It means uh, uh, opposite of or anti or without. So or someone is amoral, they... They have no morals. So this is an anion, and this is a negative charge. That's right. That's right. Yes. Exactly. So for when we're looking at ionic compounds, first thing we're going to do is we're going to name the cation. And it's real simple. You just look at it, and whatever it is, you just tell it its name. Okay. Um, now, some things like uh, have Roman numerals, and that would be if it's a transition metal. What's that, Mr. Rubin? You have to tra if you're uh, on the podcast, you have to underline it. But transition yeah. metals, where do you find transition metals on the periodic table? Transition metals in the periodic table are in the middle section there, not the group uh, over there on the far left you're or so good at drawing the big sense. gigantic group over here on the far right. And don't forget we have hydrogen up here and helium up here. But it's all of these guys right here in the middle yeah. of the periodic table. Like scandium and zinc and yeah. silver and my favorite gold. Exactly. And very right. often those have more than one possible charge, which is why we have to indicate, with, uh, indicate what those are. And what does the Roman numeral indicate? The Roman, the Roman numeral indicates the charge. It does not indicate how many of them there are in the compound. So iron 3 chloride does not have three iron. No, iron 3 chloride means it has a plus three charge. So let's take a look at that. Iron 3 chloride. Iron 3 means it has a plus three charge. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, so if we put this together, we're kind of going backwards for what our, our slide here says, but the charges have to cancel out. So if we have a plus three and a minus one here, then to, for those to cancel out, we need three of these minus ones. Now that's a total of minus three, so it would be FeCl3. So the formula of iron three chloride is FeCl3. Correct. Okay, I'm there. All right, so now if we're naming the compound, let's go the other direction. Let's do something like, uh, let's do a white screen here. Let's just do some practice. Um, so uh, let's take an example. Let's just do something really simple like uh, Na... Well, maybe not so simple. Now, now ladies and gentlemen, on your, in your packet, this is actually the second portion where it says examples from formula to name. He's doing the second part, so do that. You're going to fill that in. We're kind of going out of order here. But you'll oh, did we, were we supposed to go name the formula yeah, first? Yeah, we're supposed to name yeah, the formula. Let's just go to our next slide. All we'll right, we'll do, we'll do we'll it in order. order. We won't confuse you. All right, Mr. Bergman, you can take I can do this. So if I have a name of a compound, Mrs. Sams, can you think of a name of an ionic compound? Oh, how about... Uh, carbon dioxide. That would be great, right? That's not an ionic car compound, Carbon Mr. dioxide. Bergman. Why not? No, because because there's no ions there. Because to have an ionic compound, we need a metal and some non-metals. Carbon and oxygen are both non-metals. Oh, so this is a non-metal, and this yeah. is a non-metal. So that makes it a what compound? That would be a covalent That's compound. That's a covalent compound. Sometimes called a molecular compound, or depending a molecular on your, compound. your textbook. We want to do an ionic compound. That's Give right. An of an oh, let's go potassium, potassium carbonate. Carbonate. Oh, you're making it hard. Yeah. Wire. Now, students in uh, in internet land, carbonate, of course, is a polyatomic ion. 
Yeah. And so what I like to do is I write to like the symbol of the potassium. Of course, you know that the elemental symbol of potassium is K, but you must indicate the charge, the charge of the potassium. What is the charge of the potassium, and how do you know that, Mr. Zimmer? Charge is plus one because it is in group number one. All the way on the left-hand side of the periodic table, okay. everything in that column has a plus That's one charge. That's correct. A positive one has a positive one charge because column number one. And carbonate's a polyion, ends in an eight, and so it's going to be, got carbon in it, right? But it's C and then O and then you need a three, negative two. Now, you need to know these charges. If you don't know them, you need to have them memorized. Yep, should have done that last year. Yes, if you don't have those memorized, you need to memorize them. Now, I always ask this question when I do this particular problem. I look at the charge, the positive one charge here, and the negative two charge, and I ask this question. Do they add up to zero? Do they add up to zero? Um, no, they do not add up to zero. So I need to make them add up to zero. How do I make them add up to zero? Well, I think if we add another potassium with plus one charge, we would have a total of plus two. So the formula would be KKCO3. But we don't like to write KKCO3 because that is kind of annoying. So we write K2CO3, K2 indicating that there are two potassiums and a carbonate. And the charge of this particular compound is a zero. We always want the net charge of our compounds to be zero of our ionic compounds. Let's think of another example, Mr. Sams. Oh, another example. Let's do one. Uh, let's see. How about um, cobalt to nitrate? Now, I'm going to put a 2 for the Roman numeral 2, and then say nitrate here. All right, so what is the elemental symbol of cobalt? Cobalt is C-O, and that's big C, C, a little O. Don't get that confused, folks, with big C, big O. That's carbon monoxide, a molecular or a covalent compound. Cobalt, and the Roman numeral 2 means what? It has a plus 2 charge. That's the charge! It does not tell us how many that's there right. are. That's charge. right, charge. Charge. Roman numerals are charge. Only charge. 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 Always, Always charge, charge. Always yes. Charge. Good, all right. And nitrate, again, another polyion. N-O-3. It has a minus one charge. If you don't know that, you need to memorize it. Look on the list. Memorize them all. Now, what question do I always ask, Mr. Jane? Do they add up to zero? Positive two and negative one do not. No. So we are now allowed to add as many nitrates or cobalts as we would like. What would we like to add? I'm thinking we need one more nitrate. I'm going to go with nitrate. I agree. Now, that means we need two nitrates. Now, the problem here is, this is important here. When you write this out, folks, it's really CO, NO3, NO3. But again, that is annoying. Chemists never write it like that. So you write CO, and this is oftentimes these students, they'll write NO2 because they say I need two NOs, and that would be wrong. Incorrect. So you need CO, and then you need NO3 twice. So to do that, we have to do what? Parentheses around the polyion. Now, you don't use parentheses if it's just an individual element. But this is a polyatomic ion consisting of nitrogen and oxygen, so we have to use parentheses. And how many of them we have? We have two, so we put a little two there. Very good. All right, let's do one more. Maybe let's the one that's with a two and a three charge or something. Okay, how about um, aluminum sulfide? Aluminum, A-L-L? A-L, Only one just one A. L. How about we do that again? Mr. Bergman is a wonderful sub -eller. Did you not know that? <laughs> aluminum or aluminium, aluminium. if you're aluminium. British. Aluminium, what are they doing? Uh, sulfide. Sulfide. I don't know if such a thing exists, but hey, we're making I them up. I believe it does, okay. Aluminum, of course, is the symbol A-L. Now, the thing about interesting aluminum is that we did not know the charge um, because the Roman numeral that didn't say aluminum two or three or whatever, but you should know the charge of aluminum is always what? Plus three. Got to know that. It's one of those things you just have to know. Technically, by the way, you AP chemistry students, it's actually three plus, not plus three. Okay, and then sulfide is? Uh, that's S with a two minus charge. Now, it, it ends in an I. Since it ends in an I, it's just the element with its charge. There's a few exceptions to that, for example, cyanide and hydroxide. But if it ends in an I, nitride, sulfide, phosphide, oxide, fluoride, bromide, iodide, then it's just the element with whatever charge is appropriate based upon the Greek table. Yes, sir. Now, look at this. Do they add up to zero? Positive three and negative two does not add up no, to zero. No, it does not. So I need some additional negative charge. So yes, I'm going to add do. another sulfide. Do they add up to zero? No, they do not. Oh, I need some more positive charge. I'll add another aluminum. Okay. Do they add up to zero? That's this, this side adds up to positive six. This, <laughs> six. That's not a six. That's, That's a, a six. six. Okay. And this side adds up to negative four. That is still not Still working. not. A, but if we put another sulfide, now we have positive six and negative six. So another way, if you're, if you're kind of a math geek, um, think of common multiples. What is a common multiple of three and two? Well, the lowest common multiple is six. So you know that they're going to have to add up to six. 
So AL2 S3 is your um, formula. And notice there's no parentheses around the S. We reserve the parentheses for our polyatomic ions only. All right, let's go to the next section. Let's go from the formula to the name. All right, so the other direction now. Mr. Bergman, throw me a formula here. And I want you to right name um, M-G-O. M-G-O. Mago. Okay. It's like Magoo. No, never mind. That's no. something else. <laughs> All right, so MGO. So, again, we're dealing with an ionic compound. I know that because I have a metal and a non-metal. And Magnesium how do you know it's a metal and oxygen. Well, because we have that little stair-stepping line that goes down through our periodic table. Um, and anything to the left of that, generally speaking, is a metal. Anything to the right of that is a non-metal with a few uh, yeah. metalloids. So, folks, if you see it on either side of the line... If you've got one chemical on the on the left and one on the right of the of the stair step, then that makes it ionic. So that makes this ionic. Now, one thing I do when I get these is I split them up into their respective ions. So Mg is always a plus two ion, and oxygen here is always a minus two ion. Now, metal ions, we just give them their name. Mg is magnesium, so I would say mag. Magnesium. Now, folks, don't get magnesium mistaken with manganese. No, nope, they're is the different. Which element MN and is a transition metal. So Correct. Ball game. So careful not to make that mistake. Now, this O here with a minus 2 charge, O is the element oxygen, but whenever we see it with its charge, we put the suffix ide on it. So we're going to call that oxide because it is an ion. It has a charge. So we're going to call it magnesium oxide. Very good. All right, let's try another. Mr. How Bergman will feed me. How about we do a, I'm going to try and stump you now, Mr. Sarkis. All right, give it a shot. Okay, how about iron? No, no, we already did not. Give me formula. Give me formula. Oh, whoops, sorry. Run the other way. N-I. N-I. N-O-3. N-O-3. N-I-N-O-3. Are you sure that exists, Mr. I Bergman? I do. I know it exists. N-I-N-O-3. Okay, N-I-N-O-3. Here we go. So, I know it's a it's an ionic compound because they have a metal and some non-metals, so I'm going to split it up into some ions here. So NO3, I know that always has a minus one charge because I memorized that. Now Ni is a transition metal and transition metals can often have different charges. So here's Ni and notice my nitrate over here has a minus one charge. Well my compound here has to add up to zero for the always charge. Always adds up to zero. Always, so I can then deduce that this would be a plus one charge because there's only one of them there. So plus one and minus one, that adds up to zero. And I, I'm going to call nickel. And I, is it E-L or L-E? E-L. Yeah. Nickel. Unless you're British. Yeah, okay. And, and I'm not. So, um, so <laughs> it, it has a plus one charge and it's a transition metal, so I'm going to put the Roman numeral one, even nickel. With a, even if it's uh, by itself, you have to put a one there? By itself, it doesn't matter how many there are because this indicates the, the charge, charge of the yeah. transition metal. So nickel 1 and NO3 we know is nitrate. Now, actually, the reason I picked this one, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is because a lot of students want to leave off the Roman numeral when the charge is positive 1, but you must remain because you, if it's transition, you must leave the charge. Correct. Okay, how about All right, one more. CR2. CR2. Two. PO43. PO4. Now, he, he says PO43, and I know that just because I've been doing this a while, but that needs some parentheses because we have a polyatomic ion here, and there's three of them. So, again, we're going to split it up into the ions that we have. We have chromium with some charge, and we have PO4. Now, PO4 is phosphate, and I have memorized that that has a minus 3 charge. Okay? So, if that has a minus 3 charge... Wait a minute, Mr. Bergman. This is going to be really, really... Oh, I really funky. made a mistake. Mr. Bergman CR3? created something that doesn't exist. Let's try CR3, PO4, PO4 two. 2. There we go. That's going to make a lot more sense. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I was testing you, Mr. Sam. You CR3. didn't catch my mistake. I did not off the top of my head. Oh, the duck is back. No, you don't. Okay. Nah, okay. All right. All right. So, uh, PO4, 2. Now, if I put two of those here, just for the sake of putting... Two of those now, why there. did you put two there? Because there's a little two right here, and that told us that there oh, are, right and I'm going to add up my total charge. That's a total of minus six on this Perfect. side. Now, my chromiums, I have three, CR, CR, and CR, and that has to add up to plus six because it always has to add up to what? Zero. Must be zero. So if I have three things that must add up to plus six, they all must be plus two. Now, chromium, being a transition metal, is going to get a Roman numeral. So chromium has an H. Chromium. Now, what you need to put there is going to be the focus is the Roman numeral. Do now, the Roman three, but you need to say Roman numeral two, two because the charge is two. The so chromium, is two. It's not the number of atoms. Correct. Chromium two because the charge. Chromium two, and then PO four is phosphate. Very good. 
There you go. Okay, I think we have beat that one enough. Okay, we're going to talk we're gonna about move naming on. acids. I think Mr. Bergman's going to take the pen. I have the pen. And it's probably better off for all of us if that's the case because I, I have horrible pen. penmanship. Today we also want to talk about how do you name acids. Very quick, easy. Um, this is a we've got ch charts in the room, etc. If you have an anion that ends. Um, in the IDE ending, then it becomes a hydro something ic acid. If the anion ends in an eight, it becomes an ic acid. This is in your chart. If it ends in I, it's an us acid. And if it's a per eight, it's an ic per ic acid. Now, technically, this last one doesn't need to be listed because that's like an eight becomes an ic. Correct. Eight becomes ic. Eight becomes us. Eight becomes hydro ic. So let's just look so up an acid. Form a conga line in your room there. there and HClO4. Eight becomes ic. Eight becomes us. Now, I acids. Like hydro ic. Acids always have what, Mr. Sanders? Uh, acids uh, always have a hydrogen ion in there. Well, for our purposes now, all acids have a hydrogen ion in there. H positive. H positive. Not positive. just H, but H positive. Hydrogen ion. So you, you basically, you could see this is hydrogen plus this polyion, and this polyion's name is? That is uh, perchlorate. Oh, it's perchlorate. Yeah, it has not CLO4. Chlorate. Now, watch that, folks. So it's perchlorate, but it ends in 8. And if it ends in 8, it becomes a? Ick. Ick. So we're going to call this um, nope. uh, per, sorry, Chlor chloric ick acid. you got to add the acid. It's kind of like, folks, the word acid connects is the hydrogen piece. Yep. And the perchloric is what the, what the ClO4 becomes when it becomes the acid. Correct. That, if we're just naming the ion, giving it a new suffix, and throwing the word acid in there, indicating that it's paired up with the hydrogen. About this one. Now. So HBr. Okay. Well, the Br that is the Br minus ion, which is called bromide, and H becomes ic. I becomes us. Ide becomes hydro ic, meaning hydro brom ic, and then we put the word acid at the end. So hydro bromic acid. A couple so more we should do uh, um, HNO2. Perfect. HNO2. Okay. NO2 is the nitrite. Ion, H becomes ic, it becomes us. So instead of nitrite, we have nitrus, and we end it with acid because it has the H in front. The nitrus acid is the hydrogen here. Acid. The nitrite becomes the us business down here. Okay, that was quick. I think you guys are good at that. Yep. We're going to move on to some balancing of chemical equations. Yeehaw. Yes, we must balance equations because why do we balance equations, Mr. Zen? Well, there's this nifty little thing called the law of conservation of matter, sometimes called law of conservation of mass. Basically, what it says is what, however many atoms you have on the left side of the equation, you have to have the same number of atoms on the right side of the equation. So if I have six carbons on the left, I need six carbons on the right. If I have any number of any element on the left, I have to have the exact same number of that element on the right side of the arrow. Now the key on this, ladies and gentlemen, actually there's kind of tricks on balancing some of these. Mm -hmm. This is a combustion reaction. Think of that last year, combustion. You have a, a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen compound here turning into carbon dioxide and water. And my rule on these is the CHO2 rule. You balance the carbons first, then the hydrogens, then the oxygens, and then if necessary, then you double it. So we're going to balance the carbons first. I always start on the left. There are six carbons on this side. And so on this carbon, there are no carbons, so I need to put a six here. So now I have satisfied the carbon. Actually, when you put the six here, you are by definition putting a one here. At some point, you might need to double that, but we're not going to do that now. Now, if I look at the hydrogen number, there are 12 of them, 12 hydrogens. There's no hydrogens in this oxygen, so I need to make what here? Uh, if you put a 6 there, 6 times the 2 that are already there is yeah, 12 six times two hydrogens. Is 12. So now I've gotten my hydrogen. You know, check mark on each. Now I'm going to do my oxygen last. Oxygens are sometimes a little weird. That's why we leave them for last. Never try to do them first. Or How you'll many mess, oxygens? Mess everything up. It's almost actually better. We have oxygens here, but we only have one more space to fill right here in front of the O2. Let's so we need the to other add side up first. the oxygens yeah. on this side. So from the CO2, you have six, car six CO2s. Each CO2 has two O's. <laughs> so there are 12 oxygens in carbon dioxide. It's not 120. 12 O's. And in the water, it's 6 times 1, so that's plus 6. So we have a total of 18 oxygens, right? So what needs to go now? We already have 6 there so in that big O compound. Six, so 18 minus 6, of course, is 12. That leaves us 12. We need to balance with the O2. So what times 2 is 12? Here it is. There we go. Okay. 
Uh, we have Easy. another example that we can go back to that's on your sheet here. We might be able to do this one right on the screen. I think so. You have, uh, you have H2 plus O2 makes water. Now, one thing I always tell people, Mr. Bergman, is always start with the most complicated compound, the there thing that go. has the most stuff in it, and, that and would go be from there. That the looks like water. the H2O to me on this one. He has two hydrogens, and I look over here, hydrogen, I'm a happy camper, and over here I have one oxygen, and here I have two. Okay, so we're going to need By the way, two. would this be correct, Mr. Sorry. Sam? Sure. All right, let me, What's I don't agree with you. H2 plus O2 makes H2O. That should be an arrow. arrow. There we go. I knew that. H2O. Why don't I just put a 2 here? I'd be good. Okay, right? well, we can't do that. When we balance equations, we only put the numbers in front because if you put a little 2 there at the end, what you have done is you have just uh, changed the compound. It's no longer H2O water. It's now H2O2 hydrogen peroxide. This 2 has Big to go away. difference. H2O necessary for life. H2O2 a very strong oxidizer and will not do good things to you if you drink it. All right, so it's a whole different... You cannot whole change ball the game. compound, ladies and gentlemen. You can only change the number in front. What's the number in front called? The coefficient. The coefficient. So uh, to make the oxygens balance, I need to put a 2 here yep. to get the oxygens. That's going to lock in that oxygen at a 1. You don't have to put that there, but sometimes it's nice. Mm -hmm. But that kind of screwed up my pretty hydrogen. I had t two hydrogens. Now I have four hydrogens right here. And so I'm going to need to put a 2 here, and that makes the 4, and that's the answer. All righty. So that's not a terribly difficult we got a couple of more, and I think we'll be done for this particular podcast if we can ever go back to the previous slide. Oh, yeah, went back too far. Let's try slide. that. There, there we go. go. Hydrogen plus nitrogen makes ammonia. I'm just going to just do it this way. Hydrogen plus nitrogen, that's, these are two gases, makes ammonia. You know that smelly stuff? Mm, that's ammonia. I kind of like it, actually. But then again, I like the smell of skunk, so that, I don't you know. You are sick. I know. What can I say? You're the one that plays hard with kazoo. Hey! No ducks! <laughs> okay, so... a shotgun when you need it. All right. All right. Uh, all right, what do I need to do here? I got a problem. The most complex compound is ammonia, it looks like to me, Mr. Sams. What yep. do we do here? Well, I, let's look at the hydrogens. There are three of them. And, uh, okay, well, and then there's nitrogens. Looks like there's two of them over there. So, I, if we kind of follow our, our CHO2 rule, I guess we could call it the NHO2 rule. And, uh, let's do the nitrogens first. Nitrogen no. first it is. We've got... One on this side, right? Mm -hmm. One nitrogen here. And over here I've got two nitrogens. So, of mm -hmm. course, I've got to increase this side. That gives me two of those. That's going to lock this nitrogen into one. Yep. And that does to my hydrogen over here. Two times three, that'd be six hydrogens. Mm -hmm. And so to make that correct, I'm going to have to put a... Three. Here. Now... Um, just as a little side note, we've done, we, Mr. Bergman and I have balanced hundreds and thousands and bazillions of equations in our time as chemistry people. Um, eventually, you just kind of, you just kind of in intuitively work your way through these problems. You're going to have to wrestle with some of these. Do these in pencil because you're going to end up erasing things a lot. Okay, very rarely do you just kind of know it. Okay, it j you really have to work through them. So, um, we have some announcements. Hey! We'll even pause it. We are back live. Well, maybe not live. I don't know. Watching this later. I guess this it is, yeah. Something like that. You know, I hit that little privacy button on the wall and it didn't turn off the intercom. Yeah, we were I hoping guess that to work. be private. But we're not private. Oh, wow. We're public. All right, so anyhow, this is an example of one you might have to wrestle with a little bit. You don't... It, there, if you look, the, there's odd number of oxygens on the left. There's an even number of oxygens on the right. Anytime there's odds and evens... It takes a little work. Mr. Bergman's just doodling there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, where would you start on this one, Mr. Bergman? Uh, now, the I'm most asking most complex that. compound, in my mind, would be NO2. I could just that looks, could be, yeah, it looks pretty So, I got one in, and I've got one in. So, I got one in and one in. I'm a happy man. I got two O's here, and I got three, uh, three O's. That's hmm. a problem. Not 33 O's, oxygen. Okay, what do I do? All right, hmm. well, I've got a double sum down of a number. Yep. Now, one thing I like to note here is that because of the one in here and the one he in here, whatever I do to the N on one side are the NO2 and the NO, I must do the same. And so in this case, I like to double things. So if I were to yep. put a 2 here and a 2 here, because that keeps my ends, the in two numbers in front of the ends must be consistent. Yeah, and just as a side note, if you ever get stuck and don't quite know what to do, yes. stick a 2 in front of something. Yeah. I often I'll yeah. just stick a 2 in front of the very first compound right or sometimes with the most complex compound just to see if it works. You just got to mess with it. So what do I do now? Well... Uh, looks like we got two nitrogens. Let's count our oxygens. We've got, okay, we've got four, uh, four on the right. On this side, I got four oxygens. On this side, I got two times one. That's two plus two more. Hey, more. look at that! There's hey, four oxygens. Four. We got it. So just by sticking a two in front of one of them, yeah. we got it worked out itself. So if you ever get stuck and don't quite know where to start, stick a two in front of something. 
Give it a shot. Oh, more kazoos. All right. I think Mr. Bergman might need to find another instrument to suit his liking. All right, folks. Well, that's uh, 2.1 today. Uh, next time we'll see you in uh, 2.2. And uh, we'll see you in class. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.